Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. Those words from American poet Emma Lazarus etched on the Statue of Liberty in New York. They welcomed immigrants to the United States in the 19th and 20th centuries. But with the growing immigration crisis at the border, the U.S. government is now debating ways to limit illegal immigration. Joining me from Houston, Texas, is Jose Luis Zelaya. He fled Honduras when he was just 14 years old and is now a student at Texas A&M University. Still with us in the studio here, John Baker, a visiting law professor at Georgetown University, and Marco Casares, editor of Honduras Weekly. Uh, John, you wanted to respond uh, to what the president had said there. Well, first of all, what Marco said was absolutely correct. I mean, the uh, smugglers are taking advantage of DACA, and this has created this firestorm. And for those of us who want more legal immigration, the whole situation is makes it much more difficult. Instead of working, and it's difficult with the Republicans, I understand that, but what the administration has done has been so provocative and has so angered people all over the country that it is going to make it much more difficult to get legal immigration. You know, I, a lot of these children are coming, as we've heard, to, to reunite with families. I think it's very important to reunite with families, but the opposition is going to grow because of the way the administration has handled it. A lot of the blame initially goes back to 1996 when Republicans put in this tough immigration policy and created what are called these bars to reentry. So when a lot of people, conservatives, Republicans, think, well, go back and stand in line and you can come back legally, they can't. Once they come to the U.S. legally, they can't go back. We need to repeal that get tough legislation, allow people to go back, stand in line, and increase legal immigration. Yeah, but the problem is that they're facing violence in their home countries. But th that is not the reason they came. There's violence in all these countries. There's mm -hmm. violence all over the world. We cannot possibly take in the whole world here. Right. Moreover, they, a lot of the violence is a result of El Salvadoran who were admitted to the U.S. as refugees during the El Salvadoran War. And guess where they learned their gang tactics? L.A. And they created the gangs in L.A. and they went back to right. Central America. Right. It's Central a violence problem all over the place. But to say we're going to take them all in because of violence doesn't cure the problem. That, those countries have to deal with the, pro with the violence. We have to help them deal with the violence. Right. But the reality is they don't have control of their countries. Okay, Marco, one of the other things that President Hernandez uh, blamed this on is the fact that the United States has been conducting a war on drugs. And he says that because this war has been prosecuted in Central America and South America, some of the countries where there was a great deal of drugs, like Colombia, uh, they, 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 they went after the drug kingpins in those countries, and therefore the drug dealers actually moved into Central America, and that's where the problem comes Right. From. I mean, the, when, when we talk about the success of um, the U.S. drug war in Colombia, it's really a farce. Uh, what it did was it, it moved the problem north. Um, and the, the drug war <coughs> in Mexico um, also put pressure on the Mexican drug cartels, and so many of those cartels, like the Zetas and the Sinaloa, conveniently moved to Central America, to particularly the Northern Triangle countries. So it's, it's a problem that keeps on being shifted. When that's not being solved. And ultimately, uh, the problem lies here uh, in, in the U.S. in the sense of the, the consumer market for drugs. The United States makes up 5% of the world's population, and it consumes over two-thirds of the world's illegal drugs and over 90% of the cocaine. A lot of that comes right through the Northern Triangle countries. So um, it, it's a very complex problem. Um, uh, it, it, it's also a problem of arms trafficking. The, uh, the cartels buy, uh, sell the drugs to the United States, uh, from the United States, or to, sorry, to the United States people. And then they use that money to buy arms along, uh, in, in gun shops along the Texas border. So in, until you solve that problem, Anything else is going to be much more difficult to solve as well. Right. Jose, you were nodding your head there. Is that your experience as well, is that these gangs have moved from other places, come into Honduras, created a problem there? And when you listen to other young people in Honduras talking, I mean, what are they saying about why they want to escape? They're escaping for similar reasons. I think my friend uh, has a very, uh, very uh, accurate point whenever he talks about that violence is all over the world. But whenever you think about the economic situation in Honduras, Whenever a man is making $2 a day, but yet a pound of beans is $1.15, and 
a gallon of gas is almost $4. These men cannot be able to provide the means necessary to provide for their families. So if a man is making $2 a day, how much, each, how much is a child making? So not only those opportunities are, are, are not there to be able to eat, to be able to drink, but now you're also dealing with this horrible violence. I remember one time I was in the third grade, in the third grade, and gang members came into my school we, and they started fighting, and then the military came in as well, and they started shooting. And what do we have to do? We have to hide. We have to be able to find refuge. So these children are running from the same circumstances that I ran away from because we're coming from the same country. Yes, gang violence is horrible, but now it's worse because you are dealing with the cartels. You are dealing with political corruption. But at the end of the day, I think that it's important to talk about the politics of the issue, but at the... At, the bottom line is that we're dealing with children, and we're dealing with children running away, and they are coming to our door, and we are a compassionate nation. We are a nation that, that, that gives their hands, not their back, to children running away. We're talking about refugees, and to politicize this issue is to take away from the humanitarian re reality that this crisis is. Okay. If we're calling what's happening at the border a humanitarian crisis, what are we going to categorize what's happening in Central America? And I think that that's a question that we need to answer ourselves. Okay, John, I want you to take a listen to what another Central American president, this time President Otto Perez of Guatemala, had to say about this issue. Let's watch. Obviamente, hay una decisión que tiene que pasar por por el Congreso para ver si esos recursos los quieren poner en la frontera o también quieren atacar el problema de raíz. Y si quieren atacar el problema de raíz. Eh, creo yo que esa inversión debería de pensar en irse también a países como, como Guatemala, El Salvador y Honduras. So, John, that goes uh, directly to the poverty issue that you were talking about earlier on. But does President Perez have a point there when he says the United States needs to invest more in Central American countries? That may take away some of the reasons for people. As Look, that's back. what I was down there yeah. on, was to, to deal with the investment issues. And as we try to explain them, if you've got corrupt courts, which they do, no business person is going to want to go into your country. There, it is rampant corruption in these countries. Part of the violence problems is that the drug cartels have bought off many of the police forces in these countries. Look, it comes down to this. These are dysfunctional countries. On the one hand, they want us to solve their problem. And on the other hand, they don't want us to interfere with their sovereignty. The first requirement for any nation is to have order. If you want order in these countries and you've got a corrupt military, do you want the United States to come in and establish order in your countries? I don't think they do. It's one or the other. You can't simply continue to have a wave into the United States that they don't want to stop. And the reason they don't want to stop it is because they get remittances. That is money sent back to these countries. The mayor of Guatemala City told me he said, remittances are much more important to us than foreign aid. The whole thing is dysfunctional, but you can't cry on the one hand, we're the victim, and not take control of your own country. And the reality is, in Honduras, many of the sections are so corrupt, that's why there's the violence, because they can't control their own military and police forces. Marco, is there a balance that needs to be struck somewhere here? I'm not sure what you mean by balance. By uh, balance, I mean, you know, uh, that. In United terms of investment? Uh, well, in terms of investment, as well as accommodating those people who are escaping violence. Ah, well, I mean, look, I, I don't know how to solve the, the issue of the, uh, the child migration problem. I guess the question you have to ask is if, if, um, if you deport them, what's going to happen to them? Uh, yeah, you have the issue of, uh, you know, th you have to come here legally. But if you're desperate, whether the, the law is not going to mean anything to you if you're, if you're trying to get away from the kind of violence that you're seeing in, in Central America right now. Um, so. I don't know what the answer is. I think the, Reg the um, Obama administration has now talked about uh, granting some sort of uh, refugee status as to these children. Uh, that's probably going to happen. The United Nations has been pushing for that for the last few months. And uh, you know, given that you're not going to have any kind of uh, immigration reform anytime soon, the short term is going to be probably that these kids are going to be uh, able to apply for some sort of um, uh, refugee status in Honduras, preferably, rather than the United States. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. The okay. problem with that is it's going to damage real refugees. A friend of mine wrote the Refugee Act, and he says that in the past even, it was narrowly administered, not widely enough. But if you open it up to situations that don't fit the statute, 
real refugees are not going to be able to make it in. Well, that's part of the debate in the United States about the definition of who exactly. is a refugee. Exactly. Right now. I want to uh, give the last word to Jose. Jose, what's next for you? What of your future? I mean, at some point, do you want to return to Honduras? Yeah, I would definitely do. I think that whenever I came to the United States, uh, I think that my friend uh, asked the, the good question, uh, are these real refugees? And I think that speaking from the real perspective and understanding what these children are going through, I can tell you that they are real refugees because I am a real refugee uh, my, myself. Whenever I came, I was given the opportunity to an education. Now I am a doctoral student. What do I want to do? I want to be able to go back to Honduras later down in the future and be able to build schools. But I also want to be a professor here at Texas A&M and be able to connect these two countries and be able to help not only my native country, but also to be able to serve and give back to the country that I love so much. Because America gave me an opportunity to see my mother, to hug my sister, and an opportunity to an education. And I believe that this is something that these children also uh, need, an opportunity to an education so that they too can unify and be able to help not only give back to the United States, but also be able to help Central American countries. And that's where we have to leave it. Gentlemen, thanks to all of you, you for joining us. That is it for this edition of The Heat. We'd love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and story ideas to The Heat at cctv-america.com. And to continue the conversation, join us on Facebook at CCTV America. I'm Arnon Nido in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching. We live in an interconnected world, a truly global economy. Our aim each day is to show you how global trends impact you. Finance, trade.